Good evening, everyone. We're going to give it a few more minutes. Uh, I've got about five minutes before we start here. Um, if you uh, if you've paid attention to the comments, I'm trying to figure out how to work the stream or the uh, screen sharing. It's not working for me, unfortunately. Uh, I'm going to keep trying on that, but uh, if it doesn't work, we do have the uh, PowerPoint that I'll be using up on our website. So I've linked that below in the comments and also in the event description if you want to uh, check that out. Mitch, are you still hearing an echo? I think I've got everything muted on my end now, um, Mitch. Uh, I'm not sure what else, what else we can do on this end.
Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, I'm Nate Vanderplot, City Administrator here in Lenox. Uh, welcome to the October uh, Facebook Live event here in Lenox. Uh, we're going to start off tonight talking a little bit about water and sewer. Um, I, I expect there's going to be a ton of questions about that, whether it's rates or how something's working or, or where we're going to be working next year, whatever it might be. Um, feel free to ask it at any time. Uh, I've got a short presentation that I'm going to do and then uh, we'll move on to uh, some question and answer. But uh, by no means restrict your questions to water and sewer. There's going to be, uh, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to ask all kinds of uh, other questions here. So um, at any time, if you have any questions, just type it in the comment. Um, type it in the comment string and, and we'll get to it in the order they come in. Um, I wasn't able to get the screen sharing to work again, so uh, unfortunately we're just going to have to go without it again tonight. But we do have, uh, if you look in the comments or the event description uh, below, uh, you'll see a link to a to a document to a, our tra taxpayer transparency page. Uh, and the last document on that list is the presentation for tonight. So it, it's only eight or nine slides long. It's not very long, uh, but there is some important information on there uh, that I think uh, that I think is going to be helpful. Um, sounds like everybody's got okay audio now, so we're just we're just gonna go ahead and get started, I think, uh, and uh, we'll go with uh, we'll go with this presentation first. Uh, so, water and sewer systems. Um, that there's a lot we could talk about there. Uh, water and sewer is is really what makes a community work. Um, they're what we base our growth on. Our economic development is entirely based on that and land availability. Um, you know, the it, it's one of those things that we all take for granted, myself included. You know, when I wake up in the morning and go make my coffee, uh, I, I, I don't think about turning the tap on to get my water. It just comes out. It, it's there, right? Um, none of us think twice about um, where everything goes after that toilet is flushed uh you know it, it's 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 gone it, it's down the drain and on to, to a, a bigger and better life i guess uh so it, it's one of those things that we just don't think about all that often uh but it's it's what makes a modern community run uh you know whether it was you know a, a, a rudimentary uh, aqueduct system uh, in the roman times or to what we're using now uh, with modern pumps and uh, elevated storage, uh, water and sewer is the life of a community. Uh, it, it, you, you can't uh, you can't have a community without it. Uh, you can't uh, can't really run anything without it. Uh, and it, it's what drives our development, what drives everything that we do here. So we're going to spend some time on that tonight. Uh, if you're following on the spread in the PowerPoint, great. If not. Um, again, it's available later on. Uh, we'll make sure that, that we uh, put it on here some more too. So, uh, first, I want to talk, start talking about our water system. Uh, and if you're looking at the at the PowerPoint, you're going to see a map on there of our entire water system. A lot, a lot of blue lines all over the place, light blue dots, like two big orange dots on the north end and south end of town. Uh, that map is publicly available. So, if you're ever wondering if uh, you know where certain things are in town. Uh, where the water main that serves your house is uh, and hopefully by the end of next year all water services included so you know, you'd be able to see a uh, pretty close detail on where the water service enters your your, uh, your property uh, that's all publicly available uh, there's all kinds of other layers that you can have on there on our Linux GIS uh, map I'll make sure I link to that uh, here in the comments in a little bit um, so overall, our, our water system is, is pretty sizable. We've got two uh, 500,000 gallon 
uh, elevated storage tanks or water towers. Uh, I got the north one off Boynton Avenue, the south one over by Wilson Trailer on Oriole. Uh, over 14 miles of water mains, hundreds of valves and hydrants, um, and uh, you know other little things here and there. We do have a, a uh, water treatment plant that we used back in the day when we had our old wells. We'll talk a little bit more about that here later, uh, later on in the presentation. Um, and overall, our, our water system is in really good condition. Uh, you know, we had some catch-up work to do on the uh, water towers over the last few years. We're in the last of our five-year contract with McGuire Iron to kind of rehab those and get them up to where they should have been. Uh, and so we're hoping the next, you know, several years of contracts will be a much smaller contract uh, that will be keeping up with that maintenance. So, um, but there are some other challenges to address. You know, if you look at Boynton Avenue, for example, the, the road that we're doing this year, uh, the utility project over there, that was uh, largely a storm sewer and sanitary sewer project. Uh, but we ran into some challenges with water mains, uh, relatively new water mains. Uh, whether they were um, too shallow, uh, you know, don't have enough frost protection uh, for the cold winter months, or, uh, you know, if an elevation changes on a street to make sure we get the proper drainage, uh, we may have to lower some of those water mains, make sure that they're, um, they're at the right place. So there's still some challenges that go along with it, even though it's all in uh, relatively good condition. Uh, we've been blessed with having mostly PVC water throughout the town at this point, uh, you know, with a few exceptions. Uh, but uh, you know, a lot of those places that uh, may have some of the older ones are, are looking at uh, rehab here in the next five to ten years. So, um, in terms of uh, maintenance, you got regular hydrant uh, flushing, uh, exercising of valves. So you try and get on valves as often as we can, make sure that they're working correctly. Uh, you know, we don't want to come to a situation where we have an emergency water break uh, and we've got to go uh, searching for not one, two, three, or four valves to try and make sure that we isolate it without shutting people off as much as possible. So, uh, and then leak detection whenever necessary. Uh, last winter, uh, if I remember right, it was right around Christmas, we had a, a water main break over on First Avenue, First and Blaine. Um, had it dug up, still weren't finding it. You could follow it for a long time before you find some of these. Uh, and so we ended up calling in uh, Rural Water, who had a, uh, they have uh, sonic gear that they can use to locate a water leak, and that, that worked pretty well. We actually used it a couple weeks ago as well over in the meadows to try and see if there was something going on over there. Um, so it, it, it's pretty cool equipment, but it's uh, none of that's an exact sign. You're trying to find something underground uh, that, uh, in, in some cases, can be pretty small. So. Uh, in terms of our uh, our water, uh, in terms of you know the actual water you get out of your tap every day, uh, all of our water is purchased from Lewis and Clark Regional Water System. Uh, it's treated and line softened uh, down at a, a plant just north of Vermilion. Uh, so if you're coming into Vermilion on Highway 19 from the north, you'll see it on the west side uh, over by Spirit Mound. Uh, we have a, a seat on the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System Board of Directors. Um, just like every other uh, community, we all have one vote. It uh, doesn't matter how much water we buy or how much, uh, how big of a community we are. Uh, Lennox has the same boat as Sioux Falls, and that's one of those unique things about that board uh, that no one uh, community or one partner or member uh, can control um, the board as a whole. It, it, it's a, it really is a very good partnership uh, for the region. So right now we reserve about 440,000 gallons of water a day in our reserve capacity. That's what we contracted for when we first joined Lewis and Clark years ago. Uh, and our current daily use is anywhere from 150,000 gallons a day to about 250,000 gallons a day. Uh, that can fluctuate a lot based on weather. Uh, you know, if it's been a hot, dry week in the middle of July or August, we're going to use a lot of water. You know, that's when we're going to hit that 250,000 gallon a day mark. Um, dead of winter, 150,000 gallons a day, sometimes 130. Um, you know, and that, that fluctuates by time of day too. Uh, you know, during the day, there's not a whole lot of water being used in town. Uh, folks are at work, um, and uh, you know it's not when laundry's done. It's not where you know baths are being taken, showers, so on and so forth. So, you know, it fluctuates throughout the day, uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about Lewis and Clark in a little bit. Uh, some future future things that are coming up. On uh, when it comes to performance management, this is one of those things that we publish every month. This performance management report. Uh, there's one key metric that we try and watch here with uh, with the water with water use. Uh, and that's uh, water loss. So the industry standard is uh, to be uh, generally under 15%. We'd like to be less than that, and, and we have been. 
so you know we'll, we'll probably move our target down next year but over the last few years I'd say last two years we've really kept that water loss target uh, met. Uh, I, you know, I think for the last uh, uh, last 18 months it looks like we haven't been over 15 percent. Uh, there are still times that we're going to hit that. Uh, you know, if we're flushing hydrants, for example, uh, that water loss is going to increase quite a bit. Um, if we're, um, you know, there's a number of other things where it could come from. Uh, but over the last couple of years, we've done some water audits that. Have, I've uh, been focused on making sure we know where all that water is going and uh, more importantly that we're accounting for it. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that um, you know certain meters are, are off or anything like that uh, but uh, you know if you look at um, you know we've got several different meters that the city owns for city buildings and uh, parks and so on and so forth making those I'm sure those are all running and reporting accurately making sure um, all the um, all the settings in the meters are, are set accurately. It's it's quite a process. You know, you're going through about uh, 1,000 to 1,100 meters and making sure they're all set up correctly. So that it takes time, uh, but overall we're doing really well there. Uh, you know, I, I would say, I think when I started back in 18, 19, we were looking at probably closer to an average of 20 to 25% of water loss, um, just that it wasn't being accounted for. Uh, and, and now we're, we're consistently under that 10% mark. So, uh, you know, making sure that we know where that water is, that we can account for all, all of it uh, or as much as possible. And uh, just making sure, you know, that, that every drop of water is, a, is money. Uh, you know, a drop may not be much, but, you know, for a, a cubic foot of water, you're, you're looking at five cents of, of, of cost. And so for every, every cubic foot, we need to be able to account for as much of that as possible so that we're not... Uh, we're not losing it somewhere. So, um, in terms of sewer, uh, this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, you know, it's uh, sewer systems. Uh, I think the basic fact that everybody knows is it flows downhill, uh, always has, always will. Uh, and there's things we do to make it flow uphill. Uh, so, uh, we'll, we'll start with a little bit of that. We've got miles of sewer mains and dozens of manholes. You'll see them all over town. Um, we have uh, a main lift station down by the T-ball field off of uh, 7th, I think it is, uh, on the west, southwest end of town. And everything in town goes there, and then it gets pumped to our wastewater facility, our treatment facility. There's also three supplemental su pumps around town. You'll see one on Highway 17, just north of railroad tracks, uh, one over by the Meadows off of Highway 17, and then there's one down off of uh, Main Street and Oriel Avenue uh, down south of the high school. So those lift stations are responsible for moving stuff back up and into the system so that it can flow freely uh, with gravity uh, back to that main lift station on the southwest side of town. Um, all of that stuff goes to our um, our waste water treatment facility. This was built back in, uh, I want to say 2008, 2009 time frame. Um, there were a number of regulatory changes that came down that um, necessitated, basically required the city of Lenox uh, to move from a pond system to a, a, a mechanical treatment system. Um, now I, I think there's a tendency to look at that as a, a weakness um, or a, a negative uh, negative thing that happened here. Uh, when you look at uh, your long-term development, having a, a mechanical treatment plan is really a huge benefit. Um, you know, we whether we land in a prospect or not, uh, when industrial users in particular are looking for a home to land in South Dakota, they're often looking for uh, a community with uh, a mechanical treatment plan because it can handle um, some of the nastier stuff that they may have to send us even if they have to pre-treat it first. So uh, just some of those things to uh, keep in mind. Uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't always, uh, it wasn't always the, the easiest thing to accept that we were going to have to move from a pond system, which is pretty, pretty simple, uh, to what we have now. So... Uh, and what we have now is a, a class three uh, sequential batch sequencing batch reactor system. Um, I, I'd love to explain to you exactly how that works, uh, but I, I have to take you out there uh, and probably have Kyle, uh, our, our utility superintendent, explain it. Um, you know, my my knowledge of these ends pretty much as soon as it gets to a lift station, it moves its way back downstream. Uh, thankfully, we've got a, a, a class three operator out there. Uh, Kyle knows what he's doing, does it very well, and uh, has really set us up well for some success here. So, um, but that that class three system, that class three SBR plant that we have, um, you know, it, it it's a great benefit for the community. Um, it, it runs well. 
Um, it does take uh, a lot of care and maintenance and at times babysitting. Uh, and we'll, I can talk a little bit more about that later, but um, overall it's a really great benefit. Uh, in terms of our current um, conditions in our sewer system, I, I, I'd say they're probably best described as mixed. Um, I, I think recent projects like uh, Main Street, Central Basin projects, Boynton Avenue, those have all really improved the conditions of our sewers. We've done some really uh, important spot repairs in the last two years uh, to fix some of those deficiencies. Um, but there's a lot of stuff to fix yet. Uh, we've got about five years worth of deficiencies to uh, spot repairs that we want to fix in the capital improvement plan. Uh, and those are done at you know, anywhere from forty to eighty thousand dollars a year. Um, and that just comes out of the out of the sewer fund uh, as necessary maintenance costs. Uh, so uh, you know some of those deficiencies, uh, and this is in the presentation, there's a picture of a, a clay sewer uh, main uh, with uh, you know a, a a service coming into it, uh, but entirely missing the, the, the top of the pipe. Well, that, that lets water in. And every drop of groundwater that comes into our system uh, makes our plant more efficient, limits our storage. So if we have a, a major rain event um, and our system can't keep up because we've got too much groundwater in the system, that leads to backed up basements. Uh, you know, that's, that's, it's not just an inconvenience. It's not just a uh, an insurance claim or um, you know a, a pain in the butt to clean up. Um, we're we're talking about major public health problems here that uh, we we need to avoid. You know, so if uh, if we don't address um, these deficiencies, these cracks, these gaps, these holes and pipes that allow groundwater to seep into our uh, sanitary sewer system, we're putting public health at risk. You know, it, it's not just a matter of well, it'd be nice to have a nice sewer main. Uh, it's a really serious issue uh, and can lead to some pretty serious consequences for folks uh, that uh, don't even have serious health concerns. It, it's just there's some nasty stuff that can come into your house uh, if we don't take care of that stuff. Um, we did do a, a sewer televising and cleaning project back in 20, I think it was 2020. Uh, I'll try and put that full report uh, in the comments later, uh, make sure folks have access to that. It, it's very informative. If nothing else, we'll make sure the, the PowerPoint from Stockwell uh, from that report is in there. Um, I, I think folks would be pretty surprised to see what, what some of the issues we're dealing with are here. Um, in fact, there's some pictures where you can actually see the water falling in uh, to the sewer main as the camera is going by. Uh, so, you know, outside of that, you know, we're looking at uh, sewer mains from the 1913 range, uh, you know, in Central Basin 4 that are scheduled to be replaced next year. Uh, a lot of old clay pipe, uh, stuff that just hasn't, it, it, it can't last any longer than it has. It was, it was, um, it needed to be replaced a long time ago. So we're, we're trying to get to that now. So, um, you know, when we're looking at um, sanitary sewer key metrics, uh, I was talking about that water, that groundwater that seeps into the system and causes problems for us in treatment, causes inefficiencies in treatment, uh, and, and could cause backups if, if we have a heavy enough rain. Uh, what we monitor there is inflow and infiltration. That's what we're talking about. Uh, you know, when, when you get groundwater in and when uh, maybe sump pumps are running into the sanitary sewer, that can overwhelm the system. We call all that water that gets in there inflow and infiltration or I&I. &I. And so that's what a lot of our projects are meant to resolve. Uh, you know, when we're working on Boynton Avenue, when we're working on Central Basin 4, uh, what we're looking to do there is improve um, the sanitary sewer system uh, to take some wear and tear off of our plant, uh, to protect public health, uh, and, and uh, you know, any other number of other things. So um, I think if you, there's a chart in the presentation in the PowerPoint uh, that has, you know, the, the key metric that we follow every month. Um, and uh, you, you can see on there, um, you know, some pretty major spikes we had at May, in May of 2019. Uh, we had uh, almost 25 million gallons of influent come to uh, the wastewater plant. Uh, we had less than 5 million gallons of water sold that month. So five times as much water as we sold came to that wastewater plant. That, that's a really serious issue. Uh, and I, I can't stress that enough. Um, you know, over the last two years, uh, we've been pretty dry in 21 and 22. Uh, but even in, I'd say, mid-2020, we started to see a decline. Uh, and I, I think we are starting to see um, some of the effects of these projects uh, pay off. You know, when you look at, uh, you know, over the last seven years, we've done 
what, three to four miles of, of new sewer mains throughout town, uh, that starts to really take some of that pressure off and make sure we can get at uh, improving those numbers. So I think there's some of that. Uh, obviously, some of it's just the fact that we've had a couple of dry years. Uh, so the next time we have a, a, a fairly wet year, like 18 or 19, it'll be interesting to see what, what those numbers look like. I'm, I'm sure they're not going to stay where they are right now. Uh, but it, it, it's, a, it's a great situation to be in when you can say that your, your I and I is essentially uh, matching uh, or your, your inflow your influent and water soil is pretty much matching. So that, that's all good stuff. Um, one moment. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I want to talk about um, your bill. Uh, that that it, it's obviously the most pleasant thing uh, we all do all month is pay bills. Uh, water and sewer bills are no different, uh, and so I, I've got on uh, on this on this PowerPoint I've got uh, a Lennox utility bill and this is an actual bill, uh, and uh, and then uh, an XL Energy uh, sample bill just to talk a little bit about what some of the similarities are here. So one of the things that we hear a lot about um, the water and sewer bill, or you know, most people just call it the water bill, uh, is uh, what are all these surcharges for? We, we, we get that question every month during billing. It comes up in emails, conversations at the grocery store, whatever it might be. And so I want to talk for a little while tonight about what all those are. Uh, so if you look at your, your water and sewer bill, you're going to see a number of, um, you know, on, on the bottom side, um, you know, what the service is, what the readings were, um, uh, what the usage was and the amount owed for it. Um, those abbreviations are, are somewhat hard to decipher. Um, you know, and, and we've looked at ways to change that billing software to see if there's a way we can explain it better. We'll keep trying at that. I, I haven't found a great way to do it. Uh, so I'll, I'll just go through them here. Uh, we'll talk about what, what each of these are. Uh, so wastewater, WWTF, is the first thing that's going to show up on your bill, and that's the wastewater treatment facility. So what that is, is that that's how much you pay every month for uh, the debt service on that wastewater treatment facility they built back in, 2000, in the late 2000s. Um, that, again, all these surcharges are based on usage at this point. It's not based on a flat fee. So if you use more water, that surcharge is going to be more. Just like if you use more electricity, you're, you're going to pay more. Um, so WWTF is the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, CWCB1 would be uh, what the debt is owed. That's what you pay for the debt on the uh, clean water side of the Central Basin One project. When we say clean water, uh, that that means the water, that means the sanitary sewer and, and sometimes storm sewer aspects of that project. So when we put um, when we put the uh, sewer main in on Central Basin 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. Uh, that results in, you know, we get, a, we get a loan for that. And to pay that loan back, we get these surcharges. And uh, there, there's two loans, one for drinking water, one for clean water. Uh, so if you see a CW in front of it, it means sewer and storm sewer. If you see a DW in front of it, it means uh, water, drinking water. Uh, so CW, you got um, CB1, CB2, CB3, and uh, Boynton. Uh, so all of those are paying, that's all the debt that you owe every month based on your usage to pay off the debt on those projects. Um, once you get through those, you get to sewer. Sewer, just the, the sewer charge. That's a flat fee for, for uh, residential users in Lenox. Uh, commercial users have a flat fee. And then I think once they get over like 500 cubic feet a month, then they, they pay uh, additional rate based on, on that usage. Uh, so 34.23 is what everybody in town pays as a flat fee for your sewer charges. Uh, that pays for essentially the operation of the wastewater plant, pays for all of our staff, uh, our, our one staff, um, maintenance, um, vehicles, gas, uh, fuel for the generators, you name it, all, all those things. Uh, under that, you get towers. So we've got uh, two water towers in town. Uh, I actually think this is just for one water tower that was built uh, not that many years ago. 
Uh, and that's, uh, again, that, that's uh, a surcharge on the drinking water side for that water tower. Then you get DWCB2, DWCB3, those are the central basin projects that we talked about on the clean water side as well, on the sewer side. Uh, LCRWS, that's what the city paid um, for the, to join the Lewis and Clark Regional Water System to pay our portion of those construction costs. Uh, and so that's, um, that's, I think, the only one that's not um, an, an SRF loan, if I remember right. I think that, that's a revenue refunding bond, which is, I'm not going to get into how they're different. Uh, it, it, it would take a night on its own to, to go through that. But um, any, any of those DW ones you see, uh, that's drinking water. So you've got Boynton under there as well. And then the last one you'll see on there is water. And that's your actual water charge. Uh, you pay a dollar maintenance fee for the meter every month, uh, 50 cents for, uh, I think, an access fee. And then uh, on top of that is just your water fee, uh, the 0 0.052 per cubic foot. So about seven and a half gallons, you pay about five cents, a um, little over five cents. So that, that, that's your bill in a nutshell. Um, one of the things I, I hear often is about, you know, we have all these surcharges. Why can't, why isn't it just a simple, simple thing? Um, this, this is how we finance these utility projects. Uh, whether it's Central Basin 4 coming up next year, Boynton Avenue this year, those are financed largely with the, what we call the SRF program. And to pay those back, we, could, we either have to um, commit to a revenue or a rate increase on the actual water rate, which, which we can do, uh, but it's actually cleaner on our end to, um, to set up a surcharge. Uh, and, and so that's the route we go. Uh, now, I, you'll notice on the presentation that I have uh, an Excel Energy sample bill on there as well. Um, and I want to put that up there as a bit of a way to you know, explain that this is not unusual in the utility uh, field. Uh, you know, if you look at your Mid-American bill, um, Excel, uh, Verizon or AT&T, whoever your cellular pro provider is, you're going to have uh, far more than just, uh, you know, here's what you used, here's what you owe. Uh, you're going to have transmission fees. You're going to have uh, facility fees. You're going to have uh, regulatory fees, um, uh, demand surcharges, um, you name it. There, there's all kinds of stuff that goes into that. Uh, and that's all done for the same reasons we do uh, ours our way. Uh, you know, your water and sewer rate, the rate you pay just for, for what you're getting there, um, that, that pays to make sure that we can operate everything. Uh, and that's it. Um, Everything else you're paying on there is to cover the cost of getting it to you or getting it to the plant. Uh, you know, it, it, when we're making these upgrades, making sure that the system is safe, making sure that we have clean drinking water for everybody in town, um, the cost of transmitting that water to you or transmitting uh, your sewage uh, to our plant, that has to be absorbed somewhere. Uh, it, it's, it's not something that just uh, magically happens. Uh, it's something that we have to we have to plan for. We have to find a way to pay for uh, for that um, construction uh, and for that eventual replacement. Uh, so one of the things that we're going to be doing next year, uh, we, we've got it included in next year's budget, uh, is an actual rate study. We want somebody from the outside that hasn't looked at our system before to come in, um, evaluate where our rates are at. Are we competitive? Uh, looking at the region, uh, we, we actually are. I mean, we're not going to compete with Sioux Falls, uh, but if you look at surrounding communities, we're actually pretty darn competitive when it comes to uh, total water and sewer uh, costs every month for, for an average resident. So, um, But overall, we want to make sure that we're, we're competitive, make sure that we have our rates accurately set, uh, that we have enough money in reserve uh, today, uh, and if we don't, what, what, what we should be setting those rates at. Uh, and, you know, with an overall goal, I mean, the eventual goal of having uh, an effective rate is to have uh, the funds long term set aside for re uh, repair and replacement uh, so that you don't have to do um, surcharges on loans. You, you, you have some cash up uh, that you can use. Uh, it's just not a situation where we're in right now. We don't have, um, you know, if we're going to do a Boynton Avenue again next year for $4 million, we don't have that. Uh, we, we, we have enough to operate um, our utilities probably for a year without any revenue coming in, maybe six months, 
uh, depending on, um, on on how how the year pans out. Uh, we need to make sure we have that operational set aside, but long term set aside. We need to make sure we, we what we want to do is make sure we have enough for that long term repair and replacement program, so we're not relying on uh, the SRF programs from here through eternity. So. Um, one last uh, slide here. Uh, the future of water and sewer in Lenox. There's a lot com coming up and a lot going on. Uh, I think the biggest one is probably the uh, Lewis and Clark Regional Water Sur uh, System expansion. Uh, so this is going to expand our current our reserve capacity to about 600,000 gallons per day. Um, that's approximately what the wastewater treatment plant was built for, so it matches up pretty well. Um, We've got some payment schedules on that. We think uh, with some federal funding that's come through, and I mean significant federal funding, uh, the schedule for this is actually able to move up a couple of years and uh, saved communities. Uh, i go back and look again, but I think it saved us over a million and a half dollars uh, with the federal funding that came down for, uh, for this expansion. So uh, we're gonna continue to ex uh, explore those avenues and, and get that funding whenever we can. We've got some possible upgrades coming to the wastewater treatment facility um, for cold weather operations and sludge management. Um, SBR plants, uh, they, they work really well uh, and, and uh, it's worked well for us, uh, but it, they still have some challenges, especially in cold weather. Um, you know, the way, what we refer to as happy and unhappy bugs. Um, just like you and I, if we get cold, we're sometimes grumpy and we don't, uh, we don't always work the most efficiently when we're cold outside. Uh, and that same thing happens with, uh, with our treatment process. Those, those basins are exposed to the elements. Um, we've, we've tried a few options. We're looking at a few more, but we're looking at a couple um, options for trying to keep that system just a little bit warmer to keep those bugs a little bit happier and more efficient. Uh, and then making sure we have a way to dry out the sludge. Uh, and sludge is exactly what it sounds like. It, 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 it's sludge. It's what's left over after the treatment system, after the treatment process. So that's all got to be dried before we can take it to a landfill. Uh, and drying it, you know, it can take quite a while if you don't have the right systems in place. Uh, continued utility improvement processes or projects, which also means more surcharges. Uh, you know that, that at this point shouldn't be a whole lot of uh, surprise to folks that we're going to keep going down this path. We're going to keep those surcharges as low as we possibly can. We're going to try and rely on the sales tax bonds as much as we can to take the pressure off those surcharges. Uh, we've got Central Basin 4 coming up next year. That's a huge project. It's a probably two-year project. Uh, it's all of Elm Street from 4th Avenue all the way north to Boynton, Rumble Circle, Rumble Avenue, Cedar Academy, 3rd, 1st. Uh, I mean, it, it's a lot. It's a big project. Uh, we'll have a public meeting for that coming up here, I think the first week of December. We'll see more information out that, on that soon. Uh, we recently applied for um, uh, a new project to be placed on the state water plan, so that's kind of the precursor to getting funding for it, is that the Board of Water has to vote to put it on the state water plan. Uh, it's about a $17 million project. Uh, well, it's a sewer interceptor project. It consolidates all of our lift stations into one. Um, kind of follows the natural terrain and uh, drains our sewage down to one low point and back to the back to the wastewater treatment plant from there. Um, it, it's an expensive project, but in terms of what it could do for the community long term, it, it's big. Uh, it probably opens up, uh, I would say probably over a thousand acres of land for potential development eventually. Uh, it's not something we're, we're actively pursuing at this point, uh, but as the community grows, we need to think about how we're going to um, how we're going to serve those those outgrowth areas with utilities, and uh, one of the better ways to do that is with an interceptor. So, uh, and then this last uh, you know last night the city council met and approved uh, you know awarded a bid to uh, Suka Construction uh, to demolish our old water treatment plant on Second Avenue right behind the post office. Um, you know that that plant's been defunct for a number of years now. We sold the wells six seven years ago I think. We don't have any wells that they're connected to anymore. Uh, and we really don't even have a way to get anything out of there at this point. So, uh, so that's going to be torn down this winter, uh, assuming all goes well. Sukup Construction is the one that got the, the contract for that. Uh, came in well under uh, estimate, thankfully, about $20,000 under estimate. So uh, feeling pretty good about uh, what we can do there. Um, no formal plans at this point for what happens for the, that property. Uh, it's actually two properties. There's another lot behind it where um, some of the Central Business District employees uh, tend to park. Uh, but we'll be looking for ideas and, and thoughts for uh, you know, what could happen with, with that lot eventually. So 
Uh, that that's all I've got to say on water and sewer. I'm sure there's a ton of questions that have piled up. Um, you know, and one of the things I just quick mentioned about water and sewer. If you do have questions, don't hesitate to reach out here. We're, we're happy to to help you walk through. Uh, you know, I think when we changed over from uh, a flat fee for surcharges to a, a, a usage based surcharge, there's a bit of a, a sticker shock for some folks. Didn't really understand uh, or under, or know how much water they were using. Uh, you know, it, for my part, we 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 uh, we planted a lawn this summer. Um, maybe not the best timing to do that um, on, on my part, but it, it's got to be watered, right? Uh, and so we we spent a lot more money on on water this summer than we would have uh, anticipated previously to do that kind of work. Uh, all because it, it's based on usage now; it's not based on the flat fee. You know, uh, the water tower uh, surcharge used to be about ten dollars. Well, now that it could be ten dollars. It depends on how much water you use. Uh, so, um, you know, just know that if if your bill goes up or goes down, you're going to see more fluctuation now than you used to see, uh, simply because of the use. Uh, there, there's there's you know we haven't put any new fees in place since uh, probably July at this point, um, and then next one will go into place in I think January is when the next surcharge starts if I remember right. So. Uh, with that, I'll get to some of the questions here. I'm sorry, I'll have to scroll back up and see what we can find here. Sure. Cheryl asks, is there a limit to how many Halloween inflatables a person can have in their yard asking for a friend? Uh, not that I know of, Cheryl. Um, you know, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I go ahead and celebrate the, the Halloween spirit. Do, do your thing. Uh, the only thing I can think of uh, that we would have a restriction on is, uh, you know, try not to put it in the right of way. Try not to put it between the sidewalk and the curb, for example. Uh, you know, there, there's there's sign and, and sight restrictions we have for that. But outside of that, uh, if you can fit, uh, if you can fit 50 uh, witches into your front yard, go ahead and do 50 witches. Uh, Jim Mink asked about uh, Boynton Avenue. Uh, yeah, just a quick update on Boynton. Uh, it's, it's looking awesome. Uh, Robin, you also asked this. Um, Boynton Avenue, uh, original contract end date is October 28th. Um, if you've been out there at all lately, uh, you'll see they're, they're a lot closer to that date, uh, a lot closer to finishing than they, uh, than we would have originally thought. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're finishing up a lot of concrete this week, uh, final grading, uh, and then we're, we won't be able to seed this year. We'll put down a small seed mixture uh, and then green mulch on top of it, try and reduce some of that wintertime erosion, uh, and then we'll get a full seeding next spring uh, of a full seeding of grass. So, uh, but overall, uh, you know, we should hit, you know, what we look for is what's called substantial completion, where they've really hit all of their metrics. Just a few touch-ups, final punch list items that they have to cover yet. Um, I, I think we'll probably hit that uh, substantial completion date about a week before the contract completion date. So um, I, I'm I'm thrilled. Uh, you know the project's gone really well. Um, it looks great. Uh, we've got a great safe road there now. We've got a great drip storm drainage system. Good new sewer rains, um, looped water. I mean it, it it just all turned out really well. Uh, and to top it all off, it's the second project uh, of the year, and both of them are going to end up um, being wrapped up earlier than, than scheduled. So uh, that, that's not something that's easy to do on a project of this size. So we're really happy that uh, really happy that Holstein Construction was able to do what they, uh, do what they got done. Uh, Mitch said, I live in a new building and my water smells like sulfur, so I use a filter. Um, hmm. Mitch, it might be worthwhile just to have us uh, um, have a swing by when you get a chance. Uh, you know, if there's something we can look at there, uh, we can send out, uh, we can send out Kyle. He'd be happy to check it out. Um, I'm not sure what could be causing that. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's there's certain things that cause smells in your water. Usually, the the, the stuff we hear about is chlorine because there's you know, obviously de uh, chlorine uh, treatment for de disinfection. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it, I, I think if you reach out, just let us know 
shoot me a message with your address or whatever. Uh, we'll find a time to swing by and try and figure out if there's something that's going on there. Um, Jim asks, how much does the water, does the city pay for water? Um, I don't have it in front of me, Jim. Um, in general, you're going to see our water cost us from ten to eleven thousand dollars a month, um, just for the water that gets delivered to Lenox. So, uh, when we get water from Lewis and Clark, it goes through a meter building uh, over by the North Water Tower. Uh, so, everything going into that meter or everything going into that system from there, that's what we're talking about. That that's what we're charged. Um, so. Uh, we pay um, generally ten or eleven thousand dollars a month uh, just for the water. Uh, again, that's that's not the most expensive part, obviously, of operating a water system. Um, you know, but uh, but it, it's sizable. Uh, one of the challenges we have there's two different rates we pay. There's a there's a water rate and an, and a uh, capacity rate. And so the the more of your capacity you use. Uh, so that 440,000 gallons a day I was talking about earlier, the more you use of that, the lower your capacity charge is. Um, and uh, just makes your, your, your billing more efficient. You're paying less overall, or less per gallon, I should say. Um, Lenox typically has the highest effective rate simply because we don't use very much of our reserve capacity at this point. Um, you know, you got other communities like uh, you know, um, Harrisburg or T that use uh, pretty much all, uh, Harrisburg uh, especially, uh, all of their reserve capacity. So they have very low effective rates. Uh, so gallon for gallon, they may pay less for their water than we do, uh, even though we pay the same rate. Uh, Joe Nicole, like to ask City Hall to park the old cop car in the alley like they used to. I think those parking spaces should be used for businesses and customers. Um, you know, we can consider that, um, Joe and Nicole, um, but um, you know, uh, City Hall is a business just like anybody else. Um, you know, we'll, we'll be in and out um, uh, of the building all day long, um, going out. Um, you know, if, if we can try and uh, try and make that work, but you know, I, I can't promise anything. We're, we're trying to do our jobs as efficiently as possible, too, so. Uh, again, Joe and Nicole will we'll take that into consideration. Looks like I'm um, caught up on questions for now. Um, I think a couple other things that have come up lately, uh, just in discussion. Uh, Pedal Pals Park, just an update on that. Um, uh, for those of you who are, haven't been on the previous um, Facebook Live Q&As, we've talked about Pedal Pals Park, which is the, the flower and grass area just to the east of the swimming pool off Main, Main Street and Park Drive. Uh, it's been overgrown, really hasn't looked that great for a number of years. Uh, and so there's a group of volunteers um, that um, I think there's, uh, I'll call them my five ringleaders that have really decided to, to take, a, uh, take this to task. Uh, we've got some new elevated planters uh, over there. And so we're trying to find a time yet this fall to get together and move some of those flowers over. Uh, and then you know, most of those, those uh, overgrown flower beds uh, will be uh, mowed down, replaced with grass. So there's, there's a lot of other work that's going to go on in there over the next few years uh, as we have the, the time, and, uh, time and ability to do it. Um, but uh, we're looking forward to a much nicer looking um, Petal Pals Park over the next, uh, you know, certainly over the next month and then hopefully next spring with some um, fresh new bulbs coming up over there. Uh, Becky asks, with all the new houses being built, are there any plans to make the intersection at Jerry's in case it's a four-way stop at a traffic light or at a turn lane? Just seems like traffic's going to increase significantly at that intersection. 
Uh, yeah, Becky, it's um, we haven't had any formal discussions on it. Uh, I was actually talking with somebody just yesterday, though, about you know I I think uh, I think Boynton and, and Highway 17 is going to be the first stoplight in town someday. Um, so it, it, it's a tricky answer. Uh, first of all, because we're one of three jurisdictions at that corner, uh, so we we control Boynton Avenue. Um, the state of South Dakota, DOT, controls um, south of Casey's on Highway 17. Uh, and the county controls north uh, of Casey's on 17 and east of, of 17 on, uh, well, I can't think of the name, the number of the road, but the, the road that goes past Jerry's uh, heading east out, east out of town. Um, so th there's a process that we have to go through uh, w with each of those. Um, I do want to see what uh, I do want to see what the um, traffic looks like after Boynton's open back up. Uh, you know, we've we've got a traffic counter. I uh, want to compare and see what that looks like. Um, typically, we were seeing about two thousand to twenty five hundred or twenty two hundred vehicles a day before on Boynton Avenue. I think we're going to see more now that we've got a, a, a you know a wider uh, road for folks to drive down on uh, a little bit uh, a little bit safer uh, street to be on. Uh, so you know, we'll see what that what that does, uh, but I think we're probably going to have to work at uh, work with Lincoln County and South Dakota DOT in the next year or two. Uh, to either whether it's a, a traffic study or or something else, but they have specific metrics that they have to go by uh, that they would once it crosses a certain threshold uh, for traffic, that's when they can consider certain things. So yeah. I, um, I, I think it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with uh, with new traffic in town, with the growth that's happening, uh, with what we could assume are going to be new uh, employees at the Wilson Trailer expansion. Um, so there, there's a, there's a lot happening there. Uh, it's already a busy intersection. Uh, Mitch, new planter box is nice, but construction left them pretty chewed up. Uh, might have been too aggressive. Uh, be more general power screwdriver. Yeah, well, we can take a look at that, Mitch. Uh, not a problem. Would it be possible to have a community storm shelter? Uh, yeah, Jim, that's actually something um, something I've, I've looked at a little bit over the last year or so. Uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, we've got this campground in the park uh, with really um, not a lot of great shelter possibilities. We do have, um, you know, a, a block construction uh, bathroom, um, you know, a few hundred feet to the east of the uh, east of the campground. Uh, but anybody that was here last August, uh, you know, a year ago, knows that uh, you may not have that time to get to shelter. Uh, you know, we had a pretty bad storm with a tornado hit here um, with very little warning, and. Uh, I don't know if I could have made it over there in time. So um, we also have a couple of um, mobile home courts uh, that really don't have any uh, shelter either. Uh, so you know, if, if we were able to find something um, that could serve as a community storm shelter for those that don't otherwise don't have shelters, uh, I think that there's a lot of benefit in that. So uh, the the source we look to for that is, is FEMA. Um, like it or love it, um, it, it, it's quite a process to do these federal grants. We'll, we'll still do them. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, I, I know we've uh, we've had a couple others that we've applied for in the past and been successful with. Uh, but there, there's also a lot of uh, cost share that comes along with that. So uh, it is something we've looked into. I haven't taken any formal steps at that, uh, but I think it's something that uh, we we probably need to put some consideration into, uh, given where we live and how many folks we have exposed to to. Um, dangerous storms at, at times of the year. So thank you. Any other questions?
That's the one, Mitch. Yep. So uh, uh, Mitch is linked here to the the FEMA Safe Room funding, um, and that that's that's the grant that we would be looking at. Uh, Mitch commented on the demolition at Good Samaritan Home. Uh, yeah, it, you know, overall it ended up pretty good. I, I heard there were maybe some issues early on with the, with an excavator, uh, but uh, overall, um, you know, I, I was by there earlier today. It looks like it's pretty pretty solid job at cleaning up. Um, if, if anybody got the paper today, the Lions Independent today, uh, you'll see uh, there's an article in there about that. Um, still no long-term plans from. Uh, Sanford or Good Samaritan on, on what's going to happen at that property. Uh, we know that they're going to hold on to it uh, and uh, that the only real uh, word we've had is that uh, you know there's um, uh, there's potential for future development there and that, that's really all we know at this point. So uh, my hope is that that's sooner rather than later. I think having uh, whether it's a uh, another Sanford facility here in town or otherwise be a great addition to the community uh, and uh, we'll just have to wait and see what they decide to do with it. Uh, Jim says, just want to take a second to say thank you to the Lennox PD. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's much appreciated, Jim. Um, Lennox PD is, is guys, it's, it, they're having a, having a bit of a hard time right now. They're down a few staff. Uh, and so if you see uh, any of our officers out and about or God forbid you uh, meet one of them with lights on uh, behind you. Um, give, give them some, give them some patience, some some grace. It, it's been a long month for some of these guys already. They got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of cases, uh, and uh, doing a lot of great work. So, if you're ever interested in what's uh, what's happening for the police department, uh, you know, I mentioned our performance uh, performance management program uh, program earlier tonight. Uh, this is a report we do every every month. Uh, it's reported at the city council meeting. And it's put on our website. Uh, probably need to do a little bit better job of getting it updated there more frequently. Uh, but we put those on our website. And you can see, uh, you know, how many traffic stops they're making, um, how many tickets they're handing out, how many um, warnings, uh, what those are for, uh, you know, uh, how many arrests they've made. Um, you know, any, any number of things. Uh, so you, you can see all of that. That's all publicly available. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they do quite a, quite a job. Uh, Billy asked, how did the sidewalk program go and will it be available next year? Um, you know, I think it went pretty good. I think we set aside about $20,000, if I remember right, Billy, uh, for that program this year. Uh, we probably used may, maybe half of it. Um, and I think there's still some possibilities yet this year. I think we might have a couple more applications come in. Uh, so it, it hasn't been a huge program, uh, but I, looking at what was done, it improved some really, um, you know, some risky sidewalks for us. You know, if, if you see, you know, a sidewalk that's got a lip uh, over a half an inch, you're looking at some trip hazards there. Uh, so we had some folks that voluntarily uh, fixed it on their own, didn't ask for any help. Uh, which was great. And we had some other folks that uh, that did, and uh, we're, we're happy to help them um, fund those improvements and repairs. You know, having safe walking paths and, and sidewalks is just, you know, you really can't put a price on it. It's really important uh, to, to have that, so. Uh, Mitch says, yeah, referring to police department, I think Mitch says, yes, they work long hours, like 80 hours a week. Yeah, that's that's not uncommon. Um, Lisa, I've noticed more patrols on West 1st Avenue where people are driving way too fast. Really appreciate it. Thank you for that. that that's good to hear. Um, that's one of those other things you can see on those reports is where those stops are at. So if you're, if you're not, uh, let's say you got a lot of traffic going by your place and, uh, you're thinking, well, gosh, where, where are the police patrols? Why aren't they over here? Why haven't they ever pulled anybody over? You can actually go to that report. And um, most most calls for service that are on that report will tell you, uh, you know, on what street. Uh, it, won't, it won't give you an address. There's certain things we can't release. Uh, but it'll at least tell you what street that the, that the stop was made on or that the call was made to. Uh, and so, you know, it, uh, Keep in mind, if you haven't seen a police officer lately, there's 17 miles of street that they're patrolling, um, you know, and they're spending a fair amount of time on those highways to try and keep traffic safe there uh, in those high-speed areas, so. 
Uh, Mitch common crime is going up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it is. Uh, you know, it's one of those things that happens as as population grows naturally. Uh, we haven't been able to, you know, the every year the Department of or the Attorney General's office issues uh, a crime report with statistics for every jurisdiction. So we haven't seen this year's or last year's report yet. I know we're getting awfully late in the year, uh, but obviously there are some um, there's some turnover and upheaval over at the Attorney General's office that probably impacts. Uh, you know, um, all, all that work happening. So uh, we're giving them a little bit of a, a break here in terms of what, when we get this year, last year's numbers. But uh, it's no different uh, here than it is anywhere else that's growing. Um, certainly Lincoln County uh, dealing with that overall as well. Um, you know, the county uh, held a, a infor informational meeting last night at the 4-H uh, building here in town or just outside of town. I was able to go to that last night and see, uh, you know, two of the options that they're looking at for uh, you know, long-term um, jail and um, court space. Uh, it's not an easy thing that, that to consider. I mean, none of us want to pay for for uh, uh, for housing uh, folks that are going to jail. Uh, but it's one of those unfortunate things that we have to be responsible for as taxpayers. And uh, you know, in terms of um, feasibility of what's happening now, it's just a it's a tough issue to tackle for the county and, and for any local jurisdiction. Uh, Brent asked, are there any ordinances on retention ponds just north of Pathways? Look toxic, smell horrible. I'm not sure if there's a lift station there or not. Just didn't seem healthy. Um, yes and no, uh, Brett. There, there are ordinances or, or design requirements essentially for retention ponds. Um, I don't know the story behind that specific one, if that was put in as a detention pond or if that's something that was um, you know, done with Pathways or, or how that happened. Um, there's certainly an awful lot of uh, awful lot of nitrogen that flows into that uh, that area, uh, and so you know one of the things we've talked about on uh, our on our master trails plan. It's not something we've talked uh, very publicly about at this point, but in long term planning, is you know does it make sense for the city to have uh, that that drainage way behind Jerry's uh, off of Boynton Avenue, and then to take uh, you know take care of the rest of that drainage area as well. Um, I, I think there's some things we can do to help clean it up. Um, I don't know that there's a whole lot we can do in terms of um, uh, you know, requiring mosquito control, for example. Um, but that, that's something we can look into. And you know, one of the things that we, we prefer to do anyway is just to have a conversation with property owners if we see a problem like that and uh, see if there's a way that we can just resolve it amicably without having to rely on uh, you know, pointing to ordinance X, Y, and Z and saying, hey, if you don't do this, we have to do this. So uh, yeah, I think it's something we can do to just approach that landowner, the property owner, and talk about you know, are, are there ways that we can help, uh, that we can help uh, alleviate those concerns. Um, I, I personally haven't been by there lately. My guess is that it smells not that all different from uh, a duck marsh. Uh, I haven't been touched in a couple of years and got sewer gases and stuff like that under there. But um, yeah, definitely something we can talk to them about. Other questions? Uh, Mitch asked what the timeline is on the senior center. Um, I'd like to say, Mitch, that in the next month or two we'll have things buttoned up, but I really don't know. Uh, we've we've got a, a plan for um, you know where where we can have the senior services if this lease to a restaurant does go through. Um, my hope is that we're going to be able to finalize that here relatively soon uh, and be able to you know get things moving on a, on a good family restaurant down there. So uh, no real solid timeline yet. I would like to say by next spring we'll have something moving. Uh, hopefully have something open. Um, obviously, if, if it does get leased out for a restaurant, they're going to have to take several months to uh, do some renovations. Um, 
you know, there's a few things that they'll want to do with the kitchen, I'm sure, and cold storage, dry storage, those kinds of things. But you know, overall, the building is set up pretty well for this in the first place. So. Any other questions? Uh, update on uh, just a, one of the things that came up last night at the city council meeting. Uh, is whether we do uh, some of these events uh, live and in person as well. I think there's some folks we uh, we probably miss with the Facebook live events, whether uh, they just can't attend or uh, just aren't, aren't on Facebook a lot. Uh, so we're looking at doing one of those in early or mid-November. Uh, so there'll be more information coming on that soon. I'll try and get some postcards out in the next week or so uh, to folks to make them aware of that so they can get that on their calendars. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, it's interesting we, we look at... Uh, you look at uh, you know our our audience on Facebook, and I think there's there's an assumption for most people, myself included, sometimes that uh, the folks that uh, that aren't interacting with these Facebook Live Q and As are the folks that are you know your 65 and older crowd, and that's actually one of our heavier crowds that that follow the page. Uh, so you know, I, I think we're probably hitting that uh, that population more than we are others. Um, you know, our, our lowest subscribers are, are the youngest folks. So you, know, you, you, know, you look at your 18 to 25 year olds, those are the ones that are less likely to be on Facebook in the first place. Um, so, but either, either way, uh, you know, I want to try and make sure we're reaching as many people as possible with these, uh, these sessions, make sure that, uh, you know, we get answers, uh, folks get answers to their questions, whether it's online or in person. So we'll be uh, holding one of those here in the next month or so. And, uh, Try and do them for several weeks or several months, see how they're going. Uh, we're going to keep doing these every month as well. So, Mitch says it's supposed to be a bad winter, three feet of snow. Are we ready? Uh, I don't know if we're ever ready for three feet of snow. <laughs> um, well, I'll tell you this, Mitch. After last year's winter, I think we only got the plows out one time. Uh, it was uh, it was December uh, and. Uh, now, that was probably the worst snowfall we had. Everything else was pretty, uh, um, pretty tame by South Dakota winters. So, um, you know, we've got salt stands stockpiled already. Uh, you know, they're they're going through equipment at this point and making sure it's all ready to go for the winter. Getting those plows uh, checked out, doing uh, all the preventive maintenance, so on and so forth. So, um, I, I love a good winter. I, I I love South Dakota winters. I that's the time of year I get the most enjoyment out of living here, uh, and. Uh, now that being said, three feet sounds like uh, sounds like a bit much to me, and I, I could probably do without that. Uh, Jim, is it possible? Is sorry, is it possible to get fast food restaurants here like Subway, and McDonald's? It is. It, it all has to do with whether the right investor comes comes around. Uh, you know, and one of the other challenges we have, of course, is land availability. There's not a ton of commercial land available uh, in and around Linux, so. You know, with the community kind of expanded out to as far as they can go without getting more more land, somebody at some point is going to have to buy uh, land around town uh, to um, to develop. So, uh, yeah, it, it is possible. I, I think there's a there's a point at which those those franchises uh, look at uh, a community that's growing or has grown to a certain point and say, hey, I, I think we've got a big enough market there, and uh, you know, at some point we'll be there. Um, the big challenge for for us and you know, our situation is that we're close to Sioux Falls, and uh, without a a sizable population here in town, uh, it's just hard for I think it's hard for a lot of those investors to see um, to see that until until they uh, until they see a certain population hit. Uh, Landon Poppins, why are they tearing out some driveway approaches on point? Was there something wrong with them? Now we have a brand new street with saw cuts in them, or was there another reason why we're doing that? Uh, Lanny, I, I'm not going to answer that question tonight. Um, there's there's other things going on that uh, I'm just not going to answer that tonight. 
Uh, Jim, we definitely are growing. Yes, uh, definitely. Um, you know, certainly saw a lot of growth between 2010 and 2020. Uh, the official number uh, for our current population as of the 2020 census, I think, was just over 2,400. Um, that was all before the new homes started going up as well. So, um, you know, I would assume that we're, we've are we hit that 2,500 mark at this point, uh, and, and we're just going to continue going uh, going up from there. Um, I'm sure we're going to see a slowdown in how quickly homes are, are selling up, on, you know, especially in countryside. Uh, but there's there's plenty of activity happening yet. There's still homes that are going up. You know, new new foundations were dug last week even. Uh, so we we've seen uh, building con activity continue, and I've I see no reason why that would um, slow down long term. Uh, you know, I, we're we're in that second ring of towns around Sioux Falls where that growth is really starting to hit, and uh, there's there's a lot of potential to happen here. So. Any other questions? Uh, Lanny, I, I understand again, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to get into that tonight. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks for your questions and, and for joining us tonight. Thank you, Becky. Um, Becky says, thanks for taking the time to do these. Um, happy to do them. They're, I actually have a lot of fun with these. Um, you know, one of our goals over the past year has been to help increase public awareness uh, and, and grow that, uh, that relationship we have with the community. Uh, and I, I hope these are helping um, to do that. I hope people are, are finding them informative. Uh, and as long as, uh, as, long as they are, uh, we'll keep doing them. Uh, I, I get a lot of great, uh, Great feedback about you know getting information out there. So, uh, thank you. Thanks for joining.
All right. Uh, sounds like there's uh, maybe viewers are starting to drop off and uh, folks have had their, their questions answered. Uh, again, this is not the only time you can get those questions answered. If you do have a question at any time, feel free to stop by, email, call, text, whatever works uh, for you. We're, we're happy to answer them. Uh, come out and meet with you about a project. Uh, talk about uh, you know a, a problem area on a sidewalk in your neighborhood, whatever it might be. Uh, feel free to give us a call. You know we're we're here to try and fix uh, those issues, make sure that we're providing that quality customer service, uh, and make sure that folks are are uh, getting the most out of living here in Lenox. So uh, until next time, we'll have another one next month, uh, probably uh, probably about the second week of November again. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, feel free to reach out and thanks for joining us tonight.